Alrighty. Hello, hello everybody. This is Kirusho here, and now, before we do get started, let me give a brief little review. In the last part, we had a lot of things happening. Now, we had Deku and the Foundation team known as Delta 14. Now, Delta 14, they had an issue. The Foundation assigned Deku to their team. They were also told about their assignment. They were going to be heading on to the top of a mountain that appeared to have some sort of object on it. From what they have from global satellite imaging, they might have an object that crash landed from space. And this alone already is bad. They went to go investigate the object. However, their climb up the mountain was a little bit more than they expected. Deku, him, and Zenith, another Foundation operative a part of this team. They're the only ones who came back down. The Foundation had them up there for around 12 hours. But whenever Deku's tracking device was pinging them and showing that he was no longer going up, but instead he was now below sea level, they went to go find him. Deku and Zenith reported being trapped under a, well, avalanche for five to six days, and that raised the alarm bells. The anomaly is spatial, it's the entire mountain, and the object that is a part of it might either be another SCP or potentially something that is related to this anomalous phenomenon. Along with that, they don't know where the rest of the team is, but there was the last communication they received, and one of the members of the O5 Council personally handed this information over to Bazuku, and that information was quite interesting. Deku went back up the mountain, and currently he has been equipped with a few items the Foundation have given him. It is a hope that because this is some sort of spatial anomaly and it's moving space around atop this mountain, it's not only moving time, that Deku could potentially run into his team members and get them down. There's a chance they could still be alive. Right now the situation is simple. They could be both, to their perspective, off of the mountain. And Deku, he was willing to take on this assignment. He said yes, because he knew they were asking for his help. Now, we do cut to Deku. Deku, he already got his gear. He already got his pack, and he made his way up there. But right now, he's having some trouble. He's not too sure how long ago that was. All he remembers is the goggles on his face to prevent the wind, the cutting of snow, how bright it is out here. And, well, that's another thing. Right now, all he can focus on is the wind whistling in his ear, that high sound and the way it feels, his face cold, but his breath hot, Izuku exhaling as the massive amount of heat does come pouring out of his mouth, and Izuku, he does feel it warm his face, for the wind cuts it away and freezes it once again, him hearing the crunch over and over, crunch, 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 that's what every step has been, every leg of his journey, <laughs> He's almost fallen off the mountain a few times, but he's going up. That much is good. That much is clear. And currently, he does go to stand there, looking up and seeing the massive wall. For he's to bring his hands up and go to grab onto it. When the storm clears, he can fly. He's done so for a few parts of this place. <clears throat> But that's another thing. How high up is he? 
a few thousand. I mean, maybe a hundred thousand. He's gone up for uh, days, maybe a month. Huh, he's he's lost track of time of how many times he's seen it go dark. Uh, that is another problem. Izuku being the scale. And hours later, he does find himself on top of a flat plane. Right now, him climbing out to this flattened area as he does go to roll onto it. Before he does go to sit there, currently turning and going to hear a sound. Before he does go to climb to his feet and begin to move, making his way towards what he can sense, what he can feel. Another mind out in this blizzard. And Deku, he does get to move quickly. Him running over and trying to find them. Him feeling, seeing collapse under his foot as Deku, he does get a fall. Burning his hand out and stabbing his claws directly into the ice wall. Sliding down a few feet, Boris does stand there, currently hanging. And Deku, he does hold on. Throwing his hand directly into the wall and holding on with both his claws, before he does suck in a breath and use his telekinesis. Currently, pulling himself into the air and going to sit here, before he does go to turn and begin to breathe fire directly into the ice wall. Reno him carving out a little place for him to sit down, a little place for him to weather the storm. And right now, he does his sit here, laying out a tarp and then going to lay out a sleeping bag. Before Deku does set down his pack and keep it attached to him with a rope. Currently, him bring up his radio and going to pull the antenna up. Before he's a turn, clicking it on, pressing the button and bringing it to his mouth. Reporting in. These transmissions are going to get out. As far as I'm aware, the last you have. No sign of the team. No sign of anyone. A few encounters so far. Um, last reliable check-in... Seven... Nine days ago? I think it was nine. I found a cave. I followed those tracks, but... Found nothing. They were a dead end. Thought I saw a creature, but can't confirm. Heard another gunshot and nearly got caught in another avalanche. Tried to follow one of the snow cleared. And visibility was established once more. It's touch and go up here. As far as I can tell, I think I found something. I don't know. Some sort of... Well, it's an old knife. Chipped. Looks like it's been out here for... I, I don't know. It's old, cold, and rusty. Almost entirely. I'd snap it, but... I think it might be all rust. Maybe all the way through. It has the Foundation logo on it, so that is concerning. Deku going to turn, sliding it back into his pack before he does go to press the button and wait. Before he does go to lay down and just think, sucking in another breath and waiting. If there's anything he's going to hear, hopefully he'll hear it. It's... Weird being up here. I mean, he likes being out in nature. Maybe not winter, though. <laughs> Definitely warm-blooded. Uh, but it's nice up here. When he can see. Uh, hmm. Though, the storm's been going on for nearly two days. Okay, the transmission should be able to get out. Might have to send it back out again. He'll hunker down for now. Afterwards, he should move on. Definitely try. 
to get some sleep. And Izuku, he does think about that before he does go to lay down, beginning to sleep. And time does get a pass. Deku going to wake up as he hears a sound, turning his head and looking around, before he does get to find that the other ice wall in front of him, it's no longer there. And Deku, he has to stand up and begin to move over to the opening. Looking out and seeing that the entire part of that mountain it disappeared. It changed. Looking down and seeing smaller mountains, smaller parts he climbed. Okay. That's definitely not good. It's definitely not him turning his head. Before he has to feel another mind. And this, it does sort of intrigue him. Deku going to ask, Who is this? Who are you? Where are you? Are you on the mountain? Get out of my head. No, just shut up. Just shut up. I don't need this again. Again? Just leave me alone. Just leave me the fuck alone. Who are you? I said leave me alone. Smith? Who? Are you at Delta 14? Do you know who they are? I said stop. Deku packing up his gear, quickly flying out of this little opening, before he does make his way up into the air. And whenever he does come over the clearing, he does go to look down. And that mind he thought he found, it's no longer here. Deku confused, flying back down to land and looking around. Okay. Uh, so far, so good. Uh-huh. Put it back in his field notes. Uh, the personalized recorder. Maybe, maybe. Check back on the old tape. Maybe not. Well, no, no. It doesn't... It doesn't use cassettes. It's more... Whatever, whatever. Okay. But what now? Head up? Or head forwards? Getting an aerial view would be a good idea. It definitely wouldn't be bad. Izuku going to fly. Taking to the air with his back in his hands. Currently going up into the air and looking around. And the mountain... It goes off in that direction for miles. Potentially ever. And this does have him concerned. Before he's to see something in the distance. Currently, a bright object flying into the air. And Izuku, he does go to move. Currently, him going to make his way past one of the pillars he sees. Currently, going to fly around and see that there's no one here. And the flare, it does sit here burned out in the snow. And Deku, he does a look around, concerned, annoyed and a little pissed, before he is to hear a creature, turning his head and beginning to see something rising out of the snow. And Deku stares at it. Currently, him going to bring his hand up as he does, gonna close his hand to a fist. And the creature, it immediately is pulled into its own self. Bones breaking and buckling. Before its skull is crushed immediately, and Deku does watch it collapse. Him annoyed. Walking over and bending down to look at this creature. Before he's gonna give a report and move on. Since these things, they're bad. They're not good. They're weird. And he does continue. It feels weird. He searches. Up, down, hell, even sideways. 
He thought he found a cave. But whenever he went in, it was dark. He felt something strike him. He thought he was being attacked. He went into defense mode and attacked out as well. But there was no one there. There was nothing there. It was just him swinging at shadows in the dark. And that had him concerned. When he was able to light up the area, he found a symbol, though. One he recognized. And this, it did improve Izuku's mood immensely. Because it means that his team, the people he's trying to recover, they are still alive. And that, that did make him smile. Wondering a bit more about where to go. But he just sat there. He reported in. It's easy to understand. This place might be creepy. It might be weird. But they're safe here. This place is safe. And the symbol? It is good. Now, Deku does take a minute. He does unpack and decide to have something to eat. Wanting to just feel a little normal. Being by himself. It's been odd. Peaceful. But odd. It's given him a lot to remember. Having a meal. Sitting in a dead world. Watching the sun rise. Watching it fall. Being under that sequoia tree. Watching its leaves bloom. Watching it just turn different in spring. It was so strange. Leaves so green. But so, so red whenever spring came around. And then the tree died. And then it died. <laughs> he misses her. He wants to see her again. He doesn't understand emotions too well. Uh, maybe that's just how he is. Eh, whatever. When he gets back to the Foundation, he does want to see her again. Even his friend Mallow. And that's a nice idea. You know, it certainly is. Deku turning his head. As a person, they do sit there. Them in some winter clothes and with a bowl in their hand. Eating with a wooden spoon. Talking about it. You know, it's a rather nice idea. Though Dr. Bright does have the idea that he'd do something perverted. Huh? Oh, I can explain more if you would like. You seemed a little lonely. Were you? Um, who are you? <laughs> That's not important right now. What's important is you haven't really talked to another person in some time. You've been stuck in the foundation, and they've got you scaling a big-ass mountain for no fucking reason. You know, if those guys were going to turn up, they would turn up. Or they'd just be dead. Not like they don't replace those guys all the time. I mean, where do these task force guys come from? I don't actually know. Huh. What? Surprised that someone's actually here to talk to? You're not just stuck out here alone with your dick in your hand? Izuku staring on. As this woman in front of him just got a somewhat drink from her spoon talking about it continuing on I mean it's really that simple the foundation are doing quite a bit aren't they trying to do what they can they sent a one man unkillable operation to try and retrieve a team that might already be dead I mean isn't that all they do twiddle their thumbs all the time with bureaucracy isn't that that one thing Dr. Bright said 
Well, at least that's what she knows. Could be wrong, though. And then again, it's like that in a few places. What are you talking about? Who are you? My name's not important right now. Though, if you do want it, you have to do something for me. Um, uh, what is it? You could ask me a question. Why? Simple. I'm curious. Do you have a type? Huh? <laughs> a type. It's really that easy. I mean, I could go forward or backwards, figure this out. For, what does that mean? Uh, don't worry about it. Just a simple question. Do you have anyone you fancy, particularly? Uh, am I hallucinating? Uh, no, no, I, I didn't even hallucinate in... Huh. Some sort of effect of the anomaly? Some strange gas? Okay, you're not hallucinating, dickhead. Uh, if I was hallucinating, how would I know? You'd adapt to it if it would kill you? Probably get high if it didn't? Half time off? I don't know. I'm not your fucking therapist. So I'm definitely hallucinating. Could be. Though, consider this to be a chat with yourself, if that makes that feel better. It kind of doesn't. Fair. That's fair. Hmm. Though, I guess if you want to name... Well, for me... What's a good one? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I don't really care who you are. I mean, I, I kind of do, but... Do you know where my team's at? Oh, well, that does depend. I mean, this place is kind of weird. How so? Well, <clears throat> it's sort of complicated. Hang on. Her going to put in her food. And she does at least bring her hands up. Talking about it. Okay, her holding up her hands. This place sort of operates like a... Uh, Rubik's Cube, I guess. Small little sections that they're fixed in place. Others that aren't. <clears throat> they sort of move, and everything is sort of weird. I mean, if that makes them feel better. That's probably the best way to describe it. These pieces will shift around and not be very stable. I mean, there's a lot going on. But there's also cracks. And why does a Rubik's Cube have cracks in it? Uh, I don't know. So that something is connected to it. Really? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I just assumed it was because there were pieces put together, but that could be another thing about this place. Does that help? Maybe? That raises a lot more questions. Like? You know, I could help you by answering them. <sighs> okay. So, if all these places are connected, none of them are safe, the symbol on the wall, why would it... No, it didn't move or change, so it's stable. Huh. It's a good turn to think. This definitely raises questions about the anomaly. It's shifting, it's complex, and it's got fixed points. Places that don't move. If the team figured that out, they're probably weathering it in a cave. But that just brings up the broadcast, then. The fourth member of the Foundation team. 
there was three of them that were gone. So, that's another thing. Why exactly was Rogers back on that team? Why was Rogers wounded in the snow, bleeding, whenever he was on that recording? It's not good. Not good at all. A possible replacement? Hmm. But no. No, that's not possible. Wait a second. Are you figuring it out? Hmm? Oh, uh, f forgot you were there. Uh, sorry, sorry. No, you're right. Though, it is kind of interesting, though. I haven't talked to someone like me in months, huh? Hmm? Months? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see. You've gotten into a few of the rations already. You're still looking for them. You still got that fucking canteen. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, you've been in here for like almost a year. Huh? Time's weird, isn't it? And the days blend together eventually. Especially with all that beating ice. You'll be fine. Well, you are fine, but that's a whole other story. Yeah, I'm still weirded out by a lot of things. Huh. You and me both. Trust me, getting used to this isn't that easy. Though, if I am a voice in your head, I wouldn't be the one telling you that. No, I also probably wouldn't be the one to know. You would. Right, right. Maybe you're right. But... Jesus. No, no. Actually, my name is Sammy. Huh? Yeah, Sammy. You want to know, right? Or make up a name for me. It's just that simple. Just that easy. Though, if you were going to head out, you should probably do so. I'm pretty sure this place, if it's a fixed point, might have some roommates. Don't want to encounter them. Huh, <laughs> but maybe you're right. Oh, I most definitely am. Though, if you do go out, try, try going left. Just a bit of a feeling. You might have gotten used to this place. All right. Pego blinking. And the moment he does, she's gone. She's not there anymore. Fuck. Okay. Maybe he might have to meet with his therapist. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to stand up and feel a bit better. Feel like he's actually got done talking with someone. It was nice. Nezuku does going to leave. Currently, him stepping out and looking to his left. Before, he has a move to his right, but freeze. Turning and looking that way. Is he really going to follow his mad subconscious? Might as well. Going left. Currently, him walking that way, but picking up the pace. And Izuku, he does continue. Currently, him going that direction for about an hour before he does go to find an area. The wind starts to pick up, and the snow, it does go to blow hard. Deku going to around an area as he does get a climb up. Currently, him going to see it. There's a tent. There's equipment. Okay, okay, that's good. Try to be careful. Moving around this narrow passage, this narrow wall. And he does go to run over, bending down and going 
to look at everything. An old fire, bringing his hand down to it, and... No, no, the ashes are... No, there's a little bit of heat. So this is somewhat recent. Okay, that's good. Especially up here. Turning around. Walking over and seeing this campsite. No, 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 shit. Walking over and bending down. Bring his hand up and seeing that there are claw marks in the fabric. Along with seeing blood. Turning and staring at that. Before he has a turn to the other tent. Walking over and smelling something. And he does smell it again. That chill in the air. Followed by that scent of blood. And it does disturb him. But Izuku, when he doesn't look into the tent, he does get to see it. Right now, he does go to see Smith. Fuck. Her dead. Just with a hole in her throat and her eyes missing. Jesus. That's not good. Not good at all. What can he do, though? What can he do? Okay, okay. He'll just take her... Huh? Uh, they're gone. Where the fuck are her dog tags? Izuku going to bring his hands down, grabbing her by her jacket. Before he does a bring his hand down to her neck, him making sure he can't find the chain. Uh, there's nothing. Uh, no, no, th this doesn't make sense. Did they collect her dog tags? Any way to confirm her death? He needs it. He can't bring her body back. He expected to find the team alive. Ah, <sighs> that's not good. Is it having an idea? March around with the body around the mountain? Probably not. It's something. But he does go to grab her beanie, pulling it off and going to take it. Before he does go to bring his hand up and go to properly put her down. Right now, him going to lay her out in a grave. Now, Deku, he does get to bury her in the snow before he does go to move on. Walking over and trying to follow this lead, trying to follow everything. He went left, and now he's dredging around in the snow again, turning his head and seeing a tree. A tree? How? Beginning to move over, and whenever he doesn't get to it, he doesn't inspect it. Massive. Large. And that is interesting. He's just seen rocks and snow up here. But a tree. Huh. That's a little weird. Bring his hand up. And going to see another foundation symbol. This one is interesting. Deku is staring at it. Before he does, going to bring his claw up and go to press his finger into where the symbol was carved. And this, it does worry Deku. As he does, go to bring his claw directly into the claw carving that the symbol was made from. His finger fits. He carved this symbol. He's the one who put it here. Uh, but he's never seen it. There's something around here. Shit. Okay. Maybe he'll be safe. Maybe he'll be fine.
turning his head, not hearing a sound. But he doesn't see it. Footsteps moving towards him. Footsteps that are in the snow. And no person, no being. And that does alarm him. Before Deku, he does a bring his hands up and wait. Before he does a throw his telekinesis and try to force whatever is invisible backwards. However, that doesn't work out too well. As he is met with a sweep punch to the face and the tree, it does go to something smash into it. Deku's head smashing on the side of the tree as he has a turn, trying to fight his invisible attacker. Right now, him moving forwards, swinging around as he does go to watch his arm fly through nowhere. It going to hit air as he struck again. Currently, him going to wait, bring his hands up close, before he does going to fly up into the air backwards and flap the snow towards his invisible opponent, watching it fly up into the air and strike something. And he does begin to see the outline of a person, the outline of a human body, and that does give Deku something to try and punch. Before the snow does it a fall, it going to land in to the ground as he does it a watch, nothing happen. Currently him staring. And then he does get a turn, hearing another noise and beginning to make his way over. Currently him seeing the flare again. And that it does concern him. It does have him happy. Okay, he'll fly directly towards it and get there. Before anything happens. Before anything at all. And Deku, he does go to watch. The snowstorm does begin to move in. The wind picks up. He can't fly. Bring his hands up and grabbing Deku onto his wings. Before he does a flap them hard with his arms. Before he does begin to feel his pack gets him flying off of his back. His bag being ripped off. And that, it does alarm him. Deku going to turn and try and fly back around. Fly to grab that bag. And he does get to find it. Him going to crash into the ground as he was able to grab it. Though this does leave Deku in a bit of a situation. Going to sit up and go to feel a pain moving through his head. It'll be fine. Just a little off. Just a little... Oh, currently a giant bear being sat right there in Deku's face, and it does get a growl, and Izuku, he stares it down, and we do cut to later. Deku, he does go to move through the mountainside, the white coat of the bear currently covering his body. It's interesting up here. The bear pelts going to cover his head. Thinking about it as those goggles, they do still sit there. He's getting better at this place. Understanding it. The tree was a carving. The cave was a carving. That's more evidence he's found ever. Okay, but how else to handle this place? What else to do? Okay, okay, that would be good. But, turning his head, before he's going to feel a mind nearby, and he immediately does get to reach out, before he does get to hear Castell, his commander, who currently does stand there, Deku expressing into the man's head that they have a bit of an issue. Jesus, fuck. Okay. Uh, you're in my head? Foundation sent me, 05 clearance. Oh. Uh, pass race. Watermelon. Fuck. Okay. Do you have any more information? Temporal anomaly, spatial, reality alteration possible. Theorized? Not sure. 
odd things on mountain. Don't make sense. Don't have a lot of time. Hard to fully express. Okay. Can you? Not sure. I don't know how long I have before it moves. The mountain? It's a puzzle. It moves. There's not... That's not all it could do. More pieces. Places that are... Deku, he feeling his mind fade. And that, it does annoy him. Before he just don't stand there alone in the snow. No one to reach out to. And that does piss him off. Before he does, go scream out angrily. Pissed. Annoyed. Why won't it just stop? Why is it doing this? And that is a question Deku really wants fucking answered. Now, Deku, he does stand there. Before he does get a turn, going to bring his radio up to his mouth and begin to talk. He made contact. So far, he's not too currently sending flying through the air, smashing directly into the side of Deku's head. And he does it a field pierced through his skull and smash into his brain. Before he does, gonna take two steps to the left and then gonna turn. Before his eyes, they do begin to fill with blood. And Deku stares at somebody who's here, them holding up another arrow and firing it at him. And it does a smash into Deku's skull. It flying between his eyes and hitting into his head. Currently, him falling backwards as the person, they do get to move forwards, running over to him and bring their hands down. Before they do, go to see that Deku, he's a man. He's a person, not a creature. But his bag, that might be of interest. Them quickly ripping it off, before Deku, he does begin to have his hands twitch. One hand coming up and going to grab the arrow from the side of his skull. And the person, they do turn. When that first arrow is yanked out of Deku's skull, they do get to stare at that. Currently, Deku's right hand still twitching and trying to operate. As is going to reach for the second arrow and the person, they do get to stare on. Horrified. For you to turn and quickly run. Deku going to sit up and pull the second arrow out. Before he does, gonna watch as soon as it'll run. A gust of wind and a rush of snow. And then they're gone. Shit. Snowstorm? Bad. It definitely bad. Not good. Goggles damaged. Definitely not good. Strange. Weird. Definitely weird. Okay. Still has his canteen. Still fine. Still okay. Radio? Radio, yes. Still has the radio. They go reporting it. Before he does talk about the strange arrowheads, somebody just fired into his head. And about how he just encountered some other person here. Possibly human? He doesn't know. And that, it does raise a few more questions to him. Now, Deku, he does go to move. Currently, him trying to navigate through the blizzard, but finding it to be difficult. He can't see. It's bad. It gets worse. He hears a sound, stomping through the snow with that bear pelt, and then he's tackled to the ground. Him turning, throwing his elbow out, and going to make contact with something, and that it immediately sets Deku off. This is the last thing he fought he couldn't even see. And right now, he does go 
to throw his right hand out, smashing it towards them. Before he does, going to hit this person, and he does try to get a look. It's another man. And this, it does surprise him. Him leaning forwards as he's going to bring his hands up. Pulling the goggles up and shouting his name. And the person, they do go to look back at him. Turning their head confused before they do go to open their mouth. And their tongue is a lash out directly at Deku's throat. Slicing into it before Deku, he does go to begin to feel this choking sensation. Moving back and going to feel alarm. Now, Deku does it cover his throat. Before the creature does a climb back to its feet and rush at Deku. Attacking him and hitting him to the ground. Deku going to quickly pass before his throat does begin to regenerate. Him going to suck in air or spitting blood directly into this person's face. It smashing in their eyes and going to blind them. Now, Deku throws them off of him. Before they go crashing into the snow, and Deku does a turn. Him running forwards towards this person and smashing into them. The two tacking into each other as Deku does get sent tumbling off of the mountain. Now, the two do go to crash into the wall. Deku throwing his hand out and smashing into the wall with his claws. Before he does begin to make his way back up and trying to find anywhere to perch. Find anywhere to just stop for a minute. If he can't see, he can't walk. His goggles damaged. He can't keep moving. And these thoughts race through his mind. For Deku, there's a climb back up, and they're going to look up. Watching the area change almost like a mirage. And this does confuse him. Before he does, got to climb up and go to see something. He sees the camp. But how? Turning his head and going to see that the tents, they're damaged. But his eyes, they're drawn to the fire. The fire that's smoking. And he has it a run over. Quickly go to inspect one of the tents before he is a turn. Seeing a creature covered in hair and around the size of a dog. Uh, but it doesn't look like one. It looks more like a cat. Him staring at it. And it does not look happy to see him. Its coat is white. But it, it's big, toothy, and ready to kill him. Its massive claws there. And Deku, he does go to get rushed by this giant creature. It going to try and smash its massive teeth directly into Deku's face. And Izuku, he has to bring his hand up. Him smashing his fist directly up into his chest before he has to bring his hand up. Spinning the creature to the ground and going to throw it down. The massive creature being overwhelmed by Deku's power. And he does go to shove his hand further in before he's going to find the heart. Him ripping it out and then going to watch the creature begin to start flailing. It going to lay in the snow as Deku does pull out the still beating heart. Him going to turn and shove it to the ground. Annoyed. Walking over and looking at the other tents. Not the damage to it. It's not bad. It's... <gasps> Deku hearing that sound. Before he does go to quickly move over and bend down. Finding Smith? Uh, but she, she's alive. Izuku? Hey, hey, how? It is time altering. Are they safe? They, they had to run. It's dangerous here. I know. I just buried you um, a while back. I'm going to die? It's a spatial anomaly. Hey, I'm here, okay? Zenith is alright. Your friend's okay. I haven't found the others. But I found you. 
I'll get you out. Okay? That's fine. That's fine. It's just a little hard to breathe. I think one of my lungs is collapsing. That's all right. Do you want me to... No. No. I can do something. Help you. How? A trick I learned. Tried it on D-Class. I can turn off the pain. Turn it all off. You, you can? Yes. Can make you feel better. Before. Calmer. Her staring at Deku. And he does stare at her. Aware that it can't save her. But aware that he can make it not hurt. And she does go to sit there. Before Deku... He does begin to work, and she does go to feel it. She feels comfortable. She feels better, and then she is going to feel warm. Her right now holding on Deku's hand. Before he does go to feel it loosen. And this part, he doesn't like. He doesn't know how to deal with. He stares at her. Before he does, going to see her dog tax, bring his hand up, and going to carefully remove them. Before he does, I take her goggles and pull them carefully off of her head. Looking at that, he does have them. Okay, but now what? Now what does he do? Where does he head to? It on his mind. This place keeps fucking with him. Well then, maybe he should do something back. Cut loose. Get mad. Break the mountain? That sounds nice. Break the mountain. Hurt it. Destroy it. It would work. It definitely could work. And Izuku, he does go to turn. Quickly making his way out and going to find the giant cat-like creature. And it, he does go to take what he needs. Taking its coat for warmth. Before he's at turn and begin to walk into the snow. Thinking about how he should try to hurt it back. If it wants to keep messing with him, he'll make it hurt too. That much he can promise. Now, with that being said, Deku, he does have a lot in his head. And right now, he does have to find a nice spot. Before he does begin to generate heat, currently him standing there and this it does mean quite a bit currently him going to begin to heat up more and more for smoke to start to pour off of his body and he does look around currently him increasing it more and more and more and people they do catch some strange readings. Right on the foundation, they do see something strange on the mountain, along with the fact that their thermal imaging, it's beginning to mess up a bit. Now, Deku, he does a stand there, and the blizzard around him, it does begin to clear. It does begin to stop. Before Deku, he does go to throw out his power and feel the mountain hurt. He knows something happened. He could feel it. He could feel it in his being. The mountain, he hurt it. And currently Deku does stand there. 
As the snow, it does begin to clear around the area he's standing in. And it doesn't reveal grass. A grassy area. And that does surprise him. Looking down and watching, as he does get to see something begin to sprout out of the grass, bending down. It's wet. It's actually real. Deku going to turn. Before he does begin to walk. Watching as the area around him, it does begin to clear snow. And the mountain, it does go to burn. It begins to start shifting things around rapidly. And everyone, they do begin to see a lot happening. Deku watches night and day. Overhead, he sees the sun rise, the sun fall. He watches it rise again. He watches the moon crumble. Then he watches it come back. He watches lights sprinkle overhead. Comets. And then it stops. It stops on day. The sun directly above him. As Izuku, he does go to stop. Currently, him turning his head and seeing a facility. Before he does to move directly towards it. Aware of his objective. It looks like a building. It was already shaped like an aircraft. And he does approach it quickly. Currently, him making his way to the facility. Before he does, go look at this massive thing in front of him. Bring his hand up and going to bring it onto this metallic-like surface. And it, it does feel odd to Izuku. Before he does, go to step directly into the wall. Right now, him feeling his hand move in. And that, it does seem interesting. And Izuku finds himself in a hallway, trying to understand what's going on. He begins to investigate, look around and see what's going on. But he doesn't see anybody. He doesn't see anyone here. And that, it does alarm Deku. Before he does get a turn, hearing a sound and watching as something in the room shifted. And Deku's eyes do start to focus. Or his eyes do see an image in infrared. He sees a person. And he does go to stare directly at them. Before he is being approached them, and the look on his face does give him away. Right now, them going to move. And Deku, he does go to find them. Now, the person needed a turn. Right now, them going to back into the wall and disappear. And Deku, he has a smash right through it, punching through the wall and going to move after them. Bring his hand up and trying to lift them into the air. However, his abilities, they don't find them. He can't find a brain either. And that does not make sense to him. He wants to understand what the hell is happening in this building. And he can't. He feels the aggression rising. Currently trying to look for that heat signature and find it. Though it's gone. Whatever was just here, it's gone. He can't find it. And that, it does have him worried. Before he does go to walk over. Looking at a few of these controls and not understanding anything. Some of them are in a language he doesn't understand. Some look like another language he doesn't understand. It's almost like a computer. Bring his hands up. Where's a stop? Maybe it's a computer? One he can't understand. Okay, okay. But it all stopped. 
And then the mountain stopped. Okay. Okay, that that's good. Uh, but now what? And now what does he do? Turning and going to walk outside. Trying to see if there's any more changes. The thing out here is gone. But it could come back. And Deku, he doesn't turn his head. Currently, him going to see two people. He doesn't see Castell. And then he doesn't see Williams. The two walking up on him quickly and looking at this massive thing. Before they're confused, since Deku, he does stand there with none of his gear, different clothes, a skinned animal's belt on his head, goggles, and, well, a beard. Definitely a look for him. So, they start to ask him questions. And Izuku does respond back to them. Hearing his radio go off with chatter, asking if there's been any changes. And Izuku does bring it up. Expressing about how he reached the summit. And he's made contact with the unknown anomaly that they have on file. They might be able to do more, but there are things on this mountain that even he doesn't understand. And the person at the end, they do respond before the commander does going to take the radio and begin to speak into it, expressing. Right now, he needs a bit more of an update, a rundown. It seems that there's a lot more about this that he's not understanding. And he'd like to know what the hell is happening. Commander, we're receiving your messages in real time now. Listen, it's going to be complicated, but that radio is only for emergency use. Please use standard line. No, no, I'm pretty sure this falls under emergency. Listen, whatever the hell has been happening here, I'd like an update. We need a pickup. If we're right and this mountain has stabilized, that's good. But we don't know what the hell is going to happen here. There's other anomalies here. Things we haven't encountered before. Now, may I get that pickup? I'm going to turn. Handing the radio back to Deku as the person at the end, they do try to speak to the man. And he has to tell Deku, when they get back, he owes him a beer. Izuku, nodding his head. And the Foundation, they do begin to try and find the team. Making their way up to the mountain with a helicopter. And when they are pulled back down, there is Deku. Who does return to the site and does get greeted by Dr. Bright. The man standing there, seeing Deku who does a step off of a helicopter. Right now, him a little more unrecognizable. And that it does somewhat surprise him. Before he does go to express. Well, would you look at the mountain man? Hey, Dr. Bright. How have you been doing? Uh... Different? Long, long story. Was up there for a while. <laughs> I could tell. Nice beard, though. Maybe we should braid it. Hmm. Is it fireproof? Yes. Ah, damn it. I was going to say we have a funny idea. An opportunity? Hmm. Okay, okay. How about we braid it, and then we shave it into funny shapes? I mean, what is it? You can do the whole mutton chops thing. Or like those douchey cops with a handlebar mustache. Can't I just shave? Eh, hey, you could, but what would be the fun in that? Besides, 
I've gotten a bit of an update. And guess what's going to happen tonight? What? We're having a movie night. You know what that means? That means we get to have fun and we can have anything we want. As long as it's ethical. And not going overboard. Trust me, I got this request. Well, not. Well, I submitted this request from the O5. After I heard they put you on this mission a few days ago. How long was I gone? A few days? Five days? You alright? Uh. A lot of time to think. Okay, Izuku, him bring his hand up. If you do want to chat, we can chat. I mean, that might not have been good for you, but you seem okay. Are you okay? Do you want some 420J? You know, I can request that now. <laughs> maybe, maybe later. I would like a shower. And maybe a lot of food. A, a massive amount. Oh, oh, and um, th th those one things, those one things. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Come on. The two are going to walk away. Dr. Bright highlighting a few plans he can make. And the Foundation, they do have a new anomaly to study. As far as they're aware, they have one that can shape and, what, move through time and space? That's weird. Either it generates a field, or it just sticks to the mountain. They don't know its range. And now they have a proper look at the mountain range? Yeah. They're definitely going to have to try and fix some maps of this place since they've had it wrong for a while this is going to take a lot of amnestics and well a bit more of a cover up now the SCP Foundation they do get to work and Izuku he does currently stand in a warm shower a lot going through his mind it's better his life is better. Maybe he can move on? He doesn't like watching people die. But the world is better. The world is a lot better since then. It never happened. He changed time. No one's dead. <laughs> That's good. Everyone's alive. Everyone's fine. Maybe he should talk to the doctor. There being a knocking on the door. And Dr. Bright, he does watch Deku open it. Currently, half of his face shaved. Uh, what you going for there, lumberjack? Interrupted? Yeah, your sense of humor needs work. Anyways... Come on. We got Mallow and Rose. Besides, I asked Cthulhu, but he told me to fuck off. He's on a kill streak. Uh huh. Okay. Anyone else? Trust me, we got a few more people coming. But I was told to give you this since. Well, we can't have the brownies out publicly. At least not for everyone to try and grab. That would be a mountain of paperwork I don't want to fill out. So, uh, yeah. Remember, one of them, and if you do want more, ask. Besides, I'm sure after what you've been through, the Foundation wants you to have the entire thing for a week. Deku nodding. Before, he has to turn back to the bathroom and step in, trying to finish shaving the rest of his face. And Dr. Bright... He does it to walk over to the couch, sitting down and going to take one of his own little brownies before he does go to wipe his hands 
and then go to look around at some of the things that you have. And here's a start at some of the movies. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Let him pick. Let the kid pick. Turning to Mellow, who currently does eat some food, and turn to Dr. Bright. Him staring at her for you to look back at the food. Now, some people do begin to arrive. And Deku, he does sit here with some of his friends. All of them watching a movie marathon. And with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And yeah, this part was a little bit more weird. Because I was trying to make this a bit more random for an anomaly. But keep it cohesive. So I do hope it does make sense. And I'm going to have to figure out which anomaly to call this one. At least find a proper good number. Have a good one, guys.